It is time for a grudge match here between Todd Stevens and Liam Lonergan. Stevens on your left with Eldrazi Tron. Lonergan on your right with Elves for the 20-year-old from New Jersey. He won himself an invitational to qualify for this tournament. For Todd Stevens, a year's worth of work. Remember, these players do not have access to each other's deck lists. This is a little bit of the secretive part of the tournament here in the grudge match. Liam is on four cards right now, and I'm not entirely sure he's going to like what he sees on the other side of the table, as Todd Stevens is going to start off with an Urza's Mine and an Expedition map. In this matchup, I would say even, even more rough than your traditional Tron decks, because something like Worm Coil Engine, not really good in... Uh, a uh, large percentage of games against Elves, but Endbringer as a payoff card, just awesome. Here's a Ghost Quarter, and now Spatial Contortion will take care of the Elvish Mystic. Lonergan started things off with the Mystic and a Horizon Canopy, so he's already down to 19, and all he can do is pass the turn back. Stevens will draw Thought Knots here is what he's found. A couple copies of Wastes in Hand, and you mentioned Endbringer. It's already there for Stevens. For Lonergan, he's got a couple copies of Click to Company and a Zuri in Hand. Stevens will just play another Ghost Quarter and pass the turn back. Lonergan will draw and pass. We'll see Stevens crack the expedition map. He's going to go for an Eldrazi Temple. That's worth writing down, which is what Lonergan is going to do right now. We'll get an idea exactly what Stevens is working with here. In lieu of assembling Tron, this is kind of the next best route. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's not as powerful as, as having Tron online, but uh, certainly a nice little boost of mana here. Stevens will play that temple that he searched for. I'm going to generate two mana off of it, and now here is the Thought Not Seer. The hand, three collected companies, an Azuri and a Court of Calling. That is not functional at all. I mean, I know it's not really an option, but I, I think I would say just keep them. Just keep them all. It's fine. <laughs> Got to get locked out by Endbringer. I guess Azuri is kind of the route to get around Endbringer to a degree, Yeah. but it doesn't really matter. Stevens has got to be thrilled with the hand that he saw over there. The draw there from Lonergan. The Land of War Elves. He'll play that fall down to 18, but he's going to start getting beaten down here, and Endbringer is going to come here in just a moment. Stevens will draw. Picked up a copy of Urza's Tower. An attack for four is going to bring Lonergan down to 14. Urza's Tower is land number five, and more importantly, mana number six for Endbringer. Aptly named. It's like a big pirate ship, basically. <laughs> That's how I would describe it. Lonergan will draw a card. It might be his last one for this particular game. As there is another right, Land well, of Well, we're about to see what this does. Sure. I've been here before. And Bringer's got a lot of text. Uh, most importantly right now, deals one damage to start creature or player. It's going to start by taking care of that Land of War Elves. Here comes Thought Knots here. Uh, but it also untaps during each other player's untap step as well. So that other Land of War Elves, not, uh, not long for this world. Yep. Really? <laughs> Really good against one top of this creature. Yeah. <laughs> really good. <laughs> Going to get you a raise. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. You earned it. Now here's a Hangerback Walker. Uh, we're all set. It was the Hangerback Walker that did it, not the Endbringer. Right. Just so that we're clear. It was the Hangerback Walker. Todd Stevens. Very well dressed here this afternoon. Always dressed well in the Players' Championship. I mean, if you're, if you're going to get done up for one event a year... Why not this? Absolutely. He is very quickly up a game here over Liam Lonergan. Eldrazi Tron, an unorthodox choice, wins very easily game number one against Elves. So we get ready to take a look at the sideboards here. Now, it's funny because Stevens is in such a good spot. I don't know if he needs a sideboard much. We'll see in just a second. We'll start with Liam, though. A Phyrexian Revoker, an Avon Mind Sensor, a Burrington Forge Tender, along with Chameleon Colossus and Elvish Champion. Two Kitchen Finks, two Phyrexian Gust, two Path Exile, then a Kataki Wars Wage, a Malirius Silvok Outcast, a selfless spirit and a lot of rhetoric. It's a tough matchup here for Liam. So I think he wants a little bit of interaction here. I think the, the two copies of Pat to Exile are certainly going to be coming in. And I think I like the Elvis Champion in this matchup, too. Uh, Lonergan needs to race before Stevens gets his shop set up or is able to access all his dust. And Elvis Champion is pretty powerful in games that are not that interactive. For Todd Stevens, it's already a great matchup, but he may be, may be able to make things a little bit better with two Basilisk Collar. A Batter Skull, four Chalice of the Void, hello, along with a Pithing Needle, two Spell Skites, another copy of All's Dust, and four Surgical Extractions. Love the four copies of Chalice of the Void, the Pithing Needle, and the extra copy of All is Dust. Uh, some of his more mid-rangey uh, Eldrazi, like Matter Reshaper, like Reality Smasher, I don't think are very good in this matchup. Those can be easily removed, and he can have uh, some more interaction, some more lock pieces, and just play to that top end of Endbringer plus All is Dust. He's got a lot of good cards in this matchup. Great, great matchup, and his sideboard is, is giving him some help here, too. 
Oh, this could be bad news here from Lonergan. Now, we have seen him overcome things before. Again, you think about that New Jersey Invitational where he got the job done and won that entire tournament to head here. Don't know if he can overcome all of this, though. No, this is a challenge, but, you know, we also saw him have a four-card hand, so not a totally fair assessment of how the matchup typically plays out, um, but you could see Stevens being able to quickly accelerate into cards like Thought Nuts here and Bringer. Uh, it's a challenging recipe for elves. Well, these players will shuffle up and get ready here for game number two. We'll talk about the StarCityGames.com YouTube page where you can go back and watch replays of this tournament and a whole bunch more. Yeah, you can subscribe today at YouTube.com slash StarCityGames. A lot of great content up there, including split-second archives, versus series archives, commander versus archives, Magic Online playtesting, best of SCG Live, and much more. Subscribe today. Become one of over 100,000 subscribers over at YouTube.com slash StarCityGames. And get notified when new content is uploaded to the page. We get ready here for game number two between Todd Stevens and Liam Lonergan. For Todd Stevens, this is really his coming out year in regards to Magic. You'll find him as a streamer, uh, but also a very innovative deck builder, which I think is pretty important to note for the 30-year-old from Denton, Texas. He's got five open top baits. Note that he really started playing competitive Magic halfway through last year, so to see those numbers already quite impressive. A 2016 points leader here on our overall leaderboard on the SCG Tour. A great record throughout the year. Played Charlotte Sultai over the Legacy portion. Now you see him now in Modern playing Eldrazi Tron. And a player who was very committed um, starting in the back end of 2015 to get to the Players' Championship this year. Uh, off to a very good start. Not in the bottom of his pod. Up a game here. Great opportunity to make a run. And he wins one of these next two games. He locks himself for day two. And that's already a huge step in the right direction. So we'll see. If he's able to do that, or Lonergan can find a hand that's actually kind of functional because he did not do that to start. Now, it is worth noting in this particular matchup, Patrick, that for Lonergan, he doesn't have to worry about stuff like Pyroclasm. Yes. You know, so he can get off to a fast start and just make it so that his board is pretty durable. Though all his dust is a real problem for him. So Pyroclasm is much faster, of course, and probably the better card in the matchup, but... Lonergan can assemble enough lords in play to take Pyroclasm off the table. He cannot do that against all his dust. That card just works. So a little bit on the slower side, but it's a catch-all and not really a card Lonergan can insulate himself from. Well, it's just nice he doesn't have to worry about it because he's just playing against a colorless version. Normally, if he was playing against Green Red Tron, it would be a huge issue. Right. For this matchup, he can actually just kind of say, you know what, I'm going to dump my hand as fast as possible, which he's already starting to do with a Heritage Druid. And if Darwin's elite, which will bring along another elf, and he might be able to just dump his entire hand right now. Yes, but it, it, Steven still has the possibility of just go natural Tron into all his dust. Absolutely. He, there's nothing he can do about that. Yep. So here's three green. Nettle Sentinel. And now another elite. Now he'll add three more green. Elvish Visionary, untap the Nettle Sentinel. Time to cantrip, draw a card. Yep, he can cast that. All right, beat it. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, power. All right, well, this is basically turn 3, all is dust or bust. Yeah. This was kind of, this is what he has to do to win. He played his entire hand on the second turn of the game. And now either Todd Stevens can beat this or he can't. And Urza's tower and Urza's mine. Now, he actually does have Urza's power plant as well. Looks like he's got a batter skull over there, too. He's going to play a hanger back, Walker Will Stevens. It'll have one counter, simply pass the turn back over to Lonergan. Lonergan will draw, picked up a forest. Keep in mind, that land down there is actually a Pendle Haven to go along with Cavern of Souls, which is naturally naming elves. So the attacks look pretty good, and there's no sense in holding back. So here comes everybody. Yep, this is what your draw allows you to do, so do it. <laughs> I also think this is just his best avenue to victory in a matchup like this. A lot of damage is going to come through. We'll see if Stevens made a block or not with the hanger back walker. Be a little surprised if he didn't. It looks like, yeah, there it goes. He'll have a thopter on the way here in just a moment. And Stevens will draw. Is all this dust in the cards here? There's a power plant. So Tron is online. Looks like he's going to go to Batter Skull. Trigger will bring along a germ token. So Batter Skull represents four plus whatever power it's absorbing mm -hmm. off the table. So we call that six. But if he can block out of this turn, then things get very good because he can go offense, defense with the Batter Skull. Yep. Now Stevens is looking at Chalice of the way that he could have played for one, but he elected not to. So now we go back over 
to Lonergan. Batterskull could cause an issue here for Liam. He'll draw a card, Collected Company. And collected Company into a Lord is one of the better ways to to push through this Batterskull mm -hmm. here. I do not believe he has any copies of... He has one copy of Reclamation Sage, too, which is, of course, would be a huge hit here. Oh, yeah. And you have to imagine it's still in his deck. Yeah, there's enough artifacts, I think. Opportunity cost is fairly low. He's got to fight over Chalice of the Void anyway. And he's just going to pass the turn back. He's not going to main phase the Collected Company. Spatial Contortion to draw here for Stevens. I'm curious, does Stevens want to get to eight mana and play a Chalice for four? Is that part of the plan here? It does cut off his own Thought Knot Seers. But if he makes Lonergan play at sorcery speed, the game's a lot easier to manage. Batterskull's going to come in here. Lonergan's going to take the four. I think Liam, I'm curious to see what the plan is here on both sides. 13 to 16. Mattery Shaper here in Steven's hand that he can deploy. There's Eldrazi Temple. And that's Mattery Shaper. Still has that Chalice couple of lands in the Spatial Contortion. And Steven's just passed the turn back with the removal spell at the ready. Here's Collected Company. He'll play that. It was a green spell for Nettle Sentinel. Not sure if he missed the trigger or not. It's not untamping just yet. Not a lot doing there with the Collected Company. Heritage Druid and Land of War Elves. Yeah. Not all that exciting. Just some mana. Mm -hmm. I was a bit surprised to see Lonergan not main phase it last turn. Simply because if he hits Reclamation Sage, he has lethal that turn. Mm -hmm. Steven's picking up four life is, is no small thing. You see Lonergan realizing the mistake there, not untapping the Nettle Sentinel with the Collected Company trigger for the Nettle Sentinel. So that one, one doesn't get to untap. Didn't get a great look at his draw step here either. Probably not a huge cost here because he can't really attack in the spot unless he draws particular green spells anyway. Mm -hmm. But still, uh, ideally not the time and place to be making mistakes like that. Now the question is, are there any good attacks here? Has he found an Azuri? Has he found anything else to do? He's tapping mana, so it sounds like he found something. All right, another company. Untap the Nettle Sentinel. Some nice draws here back to back. Azuri is one. There's a couple of them in there. Path to Exile not going to help too much. What's the other one he found? Reclamation Sage. Okay, well, okay. those are the two best ones. <laughs> <laughs> those are the best ones. Yeah. So that's there you go. pretty good. Yep, those play. There goes Batter Skull. Now can he leave enough mana to be able to activate Azuri as well? I have to imagine the answer is yes. Some of these elves can't attack, of course. So here's three, four, five. Activate Azuri, a little overrun action. And, uh, yeah, I think Todd Stevens is dead. Pretty close to dead. He can spatial contortion something. Sure. This is still a lot of damage. Yes, it is. Three times, one, two, three, four, five, 18, 20. Yeah, this is way over. Yeah, that is more than enough. Liam Lonergan with some timely collected companies will win game number two here over Todd Stevens. Elves and Eldrazi Tron getting ready here for game number three. Little smile. That's a first, I little think. Little smile from Liam. I think that's a first. Yeah. After Those that collected company, who wouldn't have a smile on their face? It's pretty hard not to. It's pretty hard not to. We take a look here at the sideboards here. For each of them one more time. Lonergan's side, he's going to be on the draw. We know paths are in. Do we like paths? Uh, yes, and yeah. I believe that he showed one on one of the collected company he did. reveals also. Yeah. Um, you know, you, can, you can't have too much interaction. Lonergan still needs to stay threat dense in this matchup. But two path to exile, you know, Stevens has a lot of high quality threats. Endbringer in particular is something he has to be able to fight over. So... Uh, I wouldn't want to put in four paths, let's say, but two I think is a fine number. For Todd, he's going to be on the play here. We know Chalice is in much better on the play than on the draw in this matchup. You have to imagine those those have to stick and stay. Definitely. I mean, if he had him on the draw, he certainly has them on the play. They only get better. Yeah. Well, I know these players are going to shuffle up. We're going to take a moment and learn a little bit more about Liam Lonergan right now, a player who we did not see a ton of this year, but when we did, 
We saw him win the New Jersey Invitational in rather impressive fashion, if I do say so myself. 20-year-old from Cranford, New Jersey. You know, talking to him this weekend, he's like, this is far and away the biggest tournament he's ever played in. Kind of uncomfortable territory for him, um, but I think he's trying to make the most of it. Well, uh, certainly his win percentage on the, the tour this year, the best of any of the competitors. <laughs> for sure. Very small sample size. Uh, playing Elves and Legacy, Elves and Modern. Uh, running up into a pretty challenging matchup here, but uh, so far so good. You know, you you got to be happy to at least not be not have your back up against the wall just yet. Got out of the pod stages of Legacy, okay. Yep. And a game away from uh, solidifying a spot in day two. Yeah. If he wins this next game, he'll lock himself for day number two of competition. So we're gonna see if he's able to do that here against Todd Stevens. But again, Stevens gonna be on the play, and though Lonnie was able to win that particular game, some fortunate draws to be sure. And I still think Stevens is advantage in the matchup, but we'll see how the cards kind of unfold. We haven't seen all his dust. Yep. I think if Stevens gets to all his dust on time, those games are going to be extremely challenging for Lonergan to win. Uh, if Stevens has to win the game kind of with Eldrazi and spot removal spells, I think Lonergan can hang in that. Mm -hmm. If it's about interaction, I think Lonergan can win those games. Elves is pretty good at that. But if Stevens just comes over the top with Endbringers and all his dust, as you mentioned, that's, that's not a game he v can win. Very tough to win. Both players are going to keep seven. Urza's Towers, where Todd Stevens will start. For Lonergan, it's a Pendlehaven. And Lana War Elves. Urza's Mine, the draw here for Stevens. He'll play a Power Plant. This is a Chalice of the Void. That's about as good of a start as he can have. I'm really surprised to see these Matter Reshapers still in Stevens' deck. Maybe he feels he needs to block a little bit early on. But this is not a value matchup. And if Lonergan is doing his thing, he's going to overwhelm Matter Reshaper by such a margin. Uh, that I just don't think it's really appropriate for the matchup. Here is Elvish Archdruid. We head back over to Todd Stevens, who has drawn another copy of Chalice of the Void. He has Tron Online, Mattery Shaper, Mattery Shaper. Well, we're going to find out if they're good or not right now. Yep. That's for sure. Lonergan will draw a guard. He's got Azuri in hand, Cavern of Souls, which will naturally name Elves. Looks like he has a collected company, too. The interesting thing about Chalice, you think of Elves, you think of one-mana spells, and there's a high density of them, but this deck can operate through a Chalice. Absolutely, especially if it's entering the battlefield on the second turn. You can go Man Accelerator into just threes and fours for the whole game. That's what we might actually see Lonergan do here this game. I said before, I think Reality Smasher and Matter Reshaper are more for value matchups. They're for the Juns of the world. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think they pull a lot of weight here. And you can see Lonergan's just assembling his battlefield, and when he's ready to go, he's going to go way over the top of those. Well, here's Darwin's Elite, so yeah, he's trying to go over the top in a big way. He'll make an Elf, which is a token of himself, and he'll pass the turn back. Thought not Seer the draw. That's a good card, but I don't know if it's good enough right now. Stevens, no real good attacks to be had here. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Maybe he wants to get a little more aggressive. Well, drawing a thought knots here, he may be afford he may be able to afford to send in one of the reality sm shapers. He's feeling so inclined, or oh, the Mario shaper rather. Yeah. I just wouldn't. I don't know. It's tough. It, it, it's tough because I, I know what's going on in Liam's hand. Mm -hmm. So that's what Liam wants him to do. I'll, I'll say that. Looks like Stevens may be contemplating just going to one of these chalices. Cut off some of the top end. Well, we're going to see Thought Knots here first. I think Liam will have a response. Hand right now is Azuri, Collected Company, Cavern of Souls, and a Spell Skype. So he, I mean, he's got two good cards in hand. Company is one, Azuri is the other. But here is Collected Company. Yeah, I think this is the most powerful card in hand, and why give Stevens the option? There's six cards. Elvis Visionary and a Nettle Sentinel, probably the best of the bunch. Yeah, Lonergan's doing just fine on mana, and I think he just needs more cards to work with. Trigger, draw a card from those Visionary, and now resolve the Thought Knots here. Azurian Spellskite, along with a Forest and a Cavern of Souls. Uh, I think this is pretty straightforward here to take Azuri out of this hand, and now uh, Lonergan's in a holding pattern, not in a position to attack, and Steven's drawing to several Haymakers, uh, especially, again, all his dust. 
Death game over. Total backbreaker at this point. Yep. That would take care of things uh, very quickly. Here's an attack. Love this attack here from Stevens. I do now. I do now. You he know Lonergan's not coming back at you next turn unless he draws something overwhelming. There's a block from Liam. Expedition map is what Stevens will draw off of that. He will cast the expedition. Well, it doesn't have to cast it. It's just going to go directly onto the battlefield. Pardon me. It is worth noting that Lonergan did go by both his Path to Exiles mm -hmm. with that Collective Company. He'll draw a card now. It's a forest. I think my preference there would be to take the hit there because I, I don't think this, this game is really going to come down to a damage race. Lonergan's going to find something to play over the top or Stevens is going to lock him out of the game. And giving Stevens a look at extra cards right now I think is just uh, it's too big of a cost. What's interesting is because these players don't have each other's deck lists, Liam doesn't know how big of a cost it is. And I would much rather just be cracking back with everything this turn rather than trying to block the matter reshapers. If that's the road you want to go down to, if you were willing to trade with the matter reshapers. I think in Lon if I was in Longhorn's position, I would just take three for a couple turns here because Stevens is drawing to some very powerful cards right now, and I don't want to give him extra looks. Yeah, use the life total as a resource. Here's a spell skite. And also, you're a critical mass deck. You have Elvish Archdrude. You have Azuri in your deck. Every elf can matter if you draw one of the right cards. Yep. Court of Calling, too. Right. That's another yeah. great example. Yep. Well, here come a couple of creatures. This attack a little surprising. Those are three threes that are attacking. And Stevens knows that Lonergan's... He knows he's on air, unless he drew something big here. Yeah, he doesn't know one of the cards, I believe. If anything, I really want to block with the matter reshaper. Well, that, that's certainly for you. I mean, this, this attack only gets justified by Court of Calling. Now, it looks like with the matter reshaper's trigger on the stack, Expedition Map is going to be sacrificed. It doesn't look like Thought Not Seer blocked. Oh, I, I it does. Oh, it did. Okay, never mind. Uh, the thing is, it's uh, when you're in spots where you're bluffing like that, you got to ask, you know, what's the what's my opponent's likelihood of blocking? And blocking with the matter reshaper is such a freebie that he's going to block, especially yep. because he knows your hand and ha doesn't have very much going on. And also, if you happen to draw something really big that turn, you probably would have just attacked with everything. Sure. So it just doesn't line up. Stevens is in a great position to block, even if he respects the possibility of Lonergan having drawn a big card. And Lonergan's turn was kind of weird to begin with had he drawn something big. So it just doesn't line up, and, and Stevens makes a pretty straightforward block. Stevens has drawn a couple of cards here. Hangerback Walker. Mattery shape, excuse me, hanger back walker off of battery shape for a couple of lands as well. One of the things that doesn't work great for Stevens' deck is the fact that Expedition Map doesn't find anything like Eye of Ugin. Obviously, that card's banned. Mm -hmm. um, but there are some cards that he wishes he could search for uh, that Expedition Map doesn't allow him to search for in a late game situation like this. Here's Chalice. I think this is for three. That'll take care of Azuri. A lot of big cards. Elvis Archdruid, Reclamation, Reclamation Sage. Sage. Mm -hmm. A lot of big cards. Also worth noting, Todd Stevens' life total, a healthy 20 as Lonergan will draw. Picked up another copy of Collected Company on the upkeep. And excuse me, let's say it's the draw step. Ghost Quarter is going to take care of Cavernous Souls. And Steven seems to do this to have the Chalice of the Void plays work, because Chalice of the Void says countered, not can't play. Mm -hmm. So he could play through those cards with the Cavern. Smart play there. The question, of course, is what is this collective company going to yield? There is a colorless mana floating currently. And this is where I, I think the block and then the subsequent attack are really going to punish Lonergan. Mm -hmm. Because if he had those three creatures still in play, if he spikes a lord of some sort off of the collective company, he might be in a position simply to go wide around the Thought Knot Seer. Now, even if he finds something like Azuri or Elvis Archdruid, it's just not as impactful as it would have been previously. Nettle Sentinel 
times two. Those appear to be the hits. Remember, not casting those cards, so Chalice of the Void not going to interact here. Lana going to play a forest to go along with the untapped Pendlehaven. And pass the turn. We're going to go over to Todd. There's his power plant to draw. He'll play a mine. And now he can cast Hangerback Walker for a pretty large amount, so he's going to do that. That'll be for five. And that'll be Stevens' turn. We'll head back over to Lonergan, your New Jersey Invitational Champion. He'll play a Cavern of Souls. And <laughs> Zuri through the um, cavern. Okay. Yeah. Not a bad set of draws these last few turns. And... All right, so it's let's do some math here. Three times 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and then the Lord is another. Yeah. Huh? I don't know 15, if it's exactly lethal yet. 15, 16, 16 20, 21, 22, 23, 25, 27 coming across, and it tramples against nine toughness. So Stevens can block out. But if Lonergan had more creatures in play, this would be lethal. This would be game over this right now. This would be game over right now. Yeah. As it stands, I think Stevens is going to get one crack at all his dust. And Endbringer is much too slow now. That's off the table for numerous reasons. Right. Only blocks one thing. Too small. Doesn't count. Stevens has got to figure out how he wants to block in this situation. He's going to lose a lot of stuff, obviously. I don't think he has access to a block. At the minimum, everything attacking becomes a 5-5. Five five. It goes 2-2 two two to 5-5. Five five. Mm -hmm. So the Thought Nazi or can't... There's no trading to be done, even. It's just getting run over. Well, we're going to see how much damage is going to come through. There will be an Azuri activation. We know that. 1, 2, 3... I'm seeing how much Archer it is. is I think he might be able to double oh, if activate. He, if he can double activate, yeah, that's, that's going to do it. Yep. That is going to do it. Liam Lonergan is going to win this match here over Todd Stevens, two games to one. Els is going to overcome Eldrazitron. And for the New Jersey Invitational Champion, he has just locked himself into day number two. He will head over to the Battle for Buys pod, and we'll see where things will start for him a little bit later in the day. Having some flashbacks to the Invitational where yeah. things look like they were going poorly for Lonergan, and then... Collected company into Azuri is just, oh, no, never mind. That opponent's dead by 27 points or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, 